Hey, what's your boy Natsu with another video for the channel. Welcome back to DNV Sports Zone. And I know it's been a while since your boy has been in this chair making a video like this, but I've been busy. And if you've been on Facebook, you know why I've been busy. But even before getting into this topic that you guys all clicked on this video for, maybe a little bit of a spicy title, I might add, I do want to send over my well wishes to Rio Robinson, a great great creator in this Washington football team podcast community and a great friend of this channel who's been a huge support throughout this channel's journey. He's currently dealing with COVID right now, so I do want to send out my well wishes and hope you guys all go send out yours as well if you haven't already done so. But now on to the topic of the video. Ordinarily, you guys can look back at the channel's history. I don't usually make reactions to the Pro Bowl nominations on the team or for the team on YouTube. Usually it's just a a tweet or maybe an Instagram post. But this year I felt like I needed to make the video because of the two players that have been named Pro Bowl starters from the Washington football team. That being Jonathan Allen and Brandon Sheriff. And I'm particularly making this video because guys, I can see through it. I can see through the social media stuff that's been going on over the last couple years. These two players, especially Brandon Sheriff have been two of the most hated, if not, maybe hated is too strong of a word, two of the most underrated players on this team over the last couple of years. I sensed a lot of love from Brandon or for Jonathan Allen after the Washington football team official Twitter account and Facebook account basically posted that Jonathan Allen made his first Pro Bowl, right? Everybody was super happy. And there was a lot of tweets saying, oh my gosh, Jonathan Allen, we love you. We appreciate you. We've always appreciated you. Um, we love what you bring to the table here in D.C. Everyone knows he's a great leader. I mean, this has been true for years now. But in terms of on the field, we love what you bring to the table. But I'm, I'm old enough to remember this past offseason, not, not two or three offseasons ago, this past offseason, people saying, Jonathan Allen should be the odd man out. He should be the odd man out. He's going to likely... Garner a lot of money in the offseason, and he did. Four years, $72 million contract extension. A lot of people were like, no, we, we have a guy like Tim Settle to back him up, right? We, we, Tim Settle's ready. He's going to be ready by the time Jonathan Allen leaves. That's why we can trade Jonathan Allen for a draft pick. He, he's not that valuable to the point where we need to keep him on this team. Everybody was like, Deron Payne is better. Matt Ioannidis, off of an injury, is going to be better. People were pointing to Jonathan Allen's one and a half sacks last year as as an indicator, or they perceived as an indicator that, oh, he wasn't really effective last year. His his value to this team might be overblown, and maybe his cron- contract might be too high, and that might put us in salary cap hell, and that just might be a whole chaotic situation down the line. But I kept pointing to advanced metrics, not because I love advanced metrics in terms of... Uh, you know, looking through them and and trying to find the right ones and all that. But because they showed how valuable Jonathan Allen was last year. I mean, he had the eighth best pass rush win rate as a defense alignment last year per PFF, right? Eighth best in the entire NFL. He was elite. Again, I know everybody pointed to the one and a half sacks, but he generated a lot of hurries, a lot of tackles for loss, and was a pivotal part of that defense last year. I I put out a a tweet a couple days ago, might have been a hot take, but he's been our best defensive player over the last two years, guys. Not just this year, two years if you've been paying attention. He's been our most consistent, at least. He's definitely been the biggest leader. And this year, the 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 pass rush win rate, right? That advanced metric that was so high last year, all the quarterback hurries, the 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 fact that he was so close to being home, right? So close to hitting the quarterback, but just can never get there. That metric has pretty much translated over to sacks this year, right? Sacks is a, that just pretty much shows you sacks is a fluke stat, right? Like it is, it is. One season you can have, especially as an interior defense lineman, you could have five sacks. Next season you could have eight sacks, right? That's why you got to look at the quarterback hurries. That's why you got to look at the advanced metrics to really sense how good of a defensive interior defense alignment you have, right? And Jonathan Allen has been a great one the last two years. This year, of course, he has eight and a half sacks, right? Second in the entire NFL in terms of interior defense alignment. Only second to future Hall of Famer and all-time great talent Aaron Donald, who has 11 sacks this year, right? So I'm just putting this out there because Jonathan Allen, of course, he's being loved right now. And I think everybody, everybody felt like he should have been a pro bowler. And he's likely going to be a first team, if not second team all pro this year as well. 
But I wanted to put this out there because Jonathan Allen has not always been beloved by this team, or at least by the team's fans. And we got to be honest with ourselves, right? Again, I remember being one of the few people, I'm not going to say I was the only one, but being one of the few people who was like, Jonathan Allen is too valuable on this team. If we're going to trade away one per- person on this defensive line, it might be a Deron Payne or a Matt Ioannidis or someone like that. So I just wanted to put that out there just to let you know that Jonathan Allen, even though while he's getting a lot of love right now, that hasn't always been the case. And then a guy who I think is arguably, no, I wouldn't even say arguably, I think is the most polarizing player maybe on this Washington football team right now. And that is in terms of uh, a guy that a lot of people outside folks think is very valuable, a guy that has been around for several years now, and that is Brandon Sheriff. And much like Brandon Sheriff, John, much like Jonathan Allen, I should say, Brandon Sheriff hasn't been the most beloved player over previous years, right? And um, although he was our first all-team, our first all-pro player since 1996, and that was a punter in Matt Turk. We've talked about that forever, it feels like, on this channel. But Brandon Sheriff has made his fifth Pro Bowl out of seven seasons. And we're still having discussions on social media on how Brandon Sheriff is overrated. The media thinks he's he's better than what he is. Guys, I see these tweets. I see these Facebook posts. And it, it just infuriates me, guys. Like, this guy is a top three to four at least guard in the NFL. We're taking him for granted. This is going to be a Trent Williams situation all over again, guys. And you guys know how, how much, how angry I feel about how that situation went down. Right? Getting a fifth round pick that current year and then a third round pick the, the year after that. I believe it turned into Benjamin St. Juice. I might be wrong on that. But I get it. All the talk of Brandon Sheriff being injury prone, that is a fair take. That is a fair take. I believe he missed 23, 24 games over the course of his seven-year career. And he's missed, I believe, five games this year already. I get it. I really do. And I also get the fact that he's getting paid $18 million on the franchise tag. I've, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Initially, I was like, you know what? Let's sign him to a big long-term contract. We got to do it. We got to do it. We cannot let him go. Now I understand that 18, 19 million dollars a year for a guard, even if he is a top three guard in this league, it just, it's just a little too pricey, right? Especially when we have pretty capable backups in Wes Schweitzer and Eric Flowers, although Wes Schweitzer especially cannot stay healthy. That's too much. I, I, I get it. I get it. But what I do not get is people saying, oh, Brandon Sheriff doesn't deserve a Pro Bowl nod this year. Oh, Brandon Sheriff did not deserve an all, all Pro nod last year. He backed into his all pro nod. And I know one of my good friends know who, who I'm talking about right here when I say that. I get it. I really do. But let, let me let me break it down to you guys. Let me let me break down um, why one, Brandon Shave is super valuable to this team, and a lot of fans take him for granted. Shout out to I believe it was at Reed Winter Football for some of these stats on Twitter. Earlier today, Sheriff has only allowed a 1.3% blown block rate, his first and run block win rate at guard in the entire NFL, and hasn't allowed a single sack in nine games played this year per PFA. Right, again, you're, I'm looking at the advanced metrics, I get it, I really do, but I, I feel like that's the only way, maybe a little bit less so for defensive line, right, because you have sacks, you have like quantifiable stats, right, in sacks, quarterback hurries, tackles for loss, but as an offensive lineman, I feel like these advanced metrics are actually... I, I mean, if, you, if you're trying to point a specific position for why these metrics are made, I think offensive line is definitely up there, right? And if you're just looking at wins and losses, because I know a lot of fans think about that stuff, obviously. Washington is 6-3 and three in games with Sheriff this year. And 0-5 oh and five in games where he does not play. People might point to opponents or how the team was trending, and, and that's why we, we are the way we are in, in those stretches of the season. But Brandon Sheriff, you guys cannot tell me when he's not in the lineup or when he is in the lineup, the run game isn't much better. We open up way larger holes for Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick earlier part in the season to, to run through, to even Jared Patterson. And the pass protection is much better as well. I remember in the offseason and really in the early part of the season, a lot of people were talking about how or why the offensive line in Washington or amazed at why the Washington offensive line was ranked so high or it was top half of the league, even without a guy like Trent Williams or um, some some stars on this team. You know why? You know what, what has been the one constant in terms of why our offensive line has been ranked so high over the last couple of years since Trent has been gone? 
It's because we have Brett Asher, a top three to four guard in this league that a lot of fans take for granted. Okay, guys? Like, we, we got to stop. And then let, let's get to the to the claim that Brandon Sheriff should, is not deserving of a Pro Bowl nod this year, which I, I saw a lot of people say on Twitter. Oh, Brandon Sheriff missed a lot of time. Come on. Really, guys? Quentin Nelson's missed three games this year. Dalvin Cook is going to miss at least four games this year. Alvin Kamara has missed four games this year. Tyrone Smith, the Cowboys offensive tackle, who's always hurt, even more than Brandon Sheriff, has missed four games this year. But he still made the Pro Bowl roster for the NFC. I believe he's a starter, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong on that. But he's, he's made it onto the initial roster, which is all that matters. So we got to stop thinking that, you know, if your injury, if you miss four or five games in a season, that automatically means you're not a Pro Bowl guy. Like, like we got to stop that thinking, guys. Because if you're an elite talent who plays at least the majority of the NFL season, you're likely going to make the Pro Bowl. You just are. Especially if you have pedigree, like Brandon Sheriff has had, being a four-time Pro Bowler going into the season and being a first team or being an all-pro guy last year for the Washington football team. And then let's get to the claim that Brandon Sheriff hasn't been as good this year as he's been in previous years, right? I even believe PFF, we're talking about advanced metrics here, PFF, 71.1 grade this year. That's not great, right? That's not great. I'll admit it. That's not. What about guys like Kyle Pitts, Kenny Clark, Harrison Smith? Or let me bring up the best example here. Buda Baker, who was named to the NFC Pro Bowl roster as a safety. You know what his PFF rating is this year, guys? A 60.3. And he made it to the roster, guys. So we also got to stop thinking that, oh, you know, if you have a down year and you are an elite talent, then that automatically means you're not worthy of a Pro Bowl spot. Because, again, this is not the All-Pro nominations, right? This is We're talking about Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl roster. Brandon Shev definitely deserves to make it, and I'm glad that he did. Um... And the last thing I want to say about Brandon Sheriff, again, the, uh, I should have started off by saying this. These two guys have been like my favorite players outside of Terry McLaurin. I'll say that my two favorite players on this team for the last couple of years, even throughout the, the hate that he, they got from a lot of fans or how a lot of fans underrated them. This is the last thing I'll say about Brandon Sheriff. I mentioned Trent Williams before, guys. I, I, I just hate, I hate that we're going to pretty much have to let him go for nothing, for nothing. Right, we we didn't trade in the last couple of years, and again, although we have Wes Schweitzer, Eric Flowers, are pretty capable guys that are going to be here. I'm telling you now, our offensive line will not be the same once Brandon Sheriff leaves. It will not. And there's going to be fans next year saying, you know what, we might have taken Brandon Sheriff for granted. I really believe that's going to happen. Trent Williams, 98.5 grade from PFF. And don't even think about PFF. Just look at him. If you guys watch a lot of 49ers games, this guy is a mauler. He's he's the silverback for a reason, right? He's become the best player. I wouldn't even say just the best offensive lineman, the best player arguably in football right now, bro. I'm worried that's going to happen with Brandon Sheriff as well. And I'm worried that teams did not give him the love, or the Washington football team fans did not give him the love that he has deserved over the last couple of years. Um, but that's it, guys. That's all. That's all I'm going to say for this video, guys. Again, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be a, a, a huge downer in this video. I just had a lot of things to get off my chest because one, I saw a lot of fake love for Jonathan Allen over these last couple months. Right after he's, I'll admit he's had his best season to date. Right, he should have got that love last year, even when he only had one and a half sacks. But a lot of fans just pay attention to these those eye popping numbers like sacks and don't look at the advanced stuff and think or look. Look at him like in terms of one-on-one -on -one matchups every single week, and look at how amazing he is as a as a talent. Even Brian Baldinger, the NFL analyst who I know a lot of fans adore, a lot of fans look at forward to his highlights every single week. He always talked up Jonathan Allen last year, not even just this year where he had eight and a half sacks last year as well. Just my my point here is, guys, like I I understand. Washington football team, Washington Redskins even back then, we haven't had a lot of elite talents walk through our doors. I understand that. I really do. But when we have a guy like Jonathan Allen and Brandon Shera, who have been nothing but spectacular on the field and off the field, I might add, we got to appreciate these guys. Jonathan Allen, we're lucky. We signed him to a four-year, $72 million contract, so he's going to be here for the long haul, right? But Brandon Sheriff, he's likely not going to be here past this year. So let's just let's just enjoy what he brings to the table. And he might get injured. I'm not gonna lie, he might get injured. 
But at the same point, we cannot just dismiss that he's an elite talent worthy of a Pro Bowl nomination because of the fact that he misses a couple games per season. We can't. We can't. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the DMV Sports Zone channel. We like to post fire content on here as much as possible. Also, go follow our Twitter page at DMV Sports Zone and our Instagram page, all overcase DMV Sports Zone, where we post even more great content on there than our YouTube channel here. But thank you guys again so much for watching. You guys might see this what the day before Christmas Eve, maybe on Christmas Eve. But um, yeah, we should, we do have the Dallas matchup coming up, and we have some more content coming up before Sunday's matchup. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching once again, and see you on the next one. Peace.